I've got high hopes for this one, guys. Greetings and welcome to Smartwatch Ticks. We're a YouTube channel on the web at smartwatchticks.com. Fitness tracker, body temperature monitor. Yep, COVID is amongst us and China is reacting by bringing us new technology that includes temperature monitoring, but not just temperature monitoring. There's going to be a bunch. You're going to see them here, a lot of them that do temperature. But check this one out. First of all, it's coming to us from Banggood. They've got a whole bunch of these. Uh, they're lining up, folks. They, they sent me a Christmas bag like Santa Claus presents filled with watches. So we're going to work our way through them. This particular one is a Bakey E66. Remember that. It's got thermometer, it's got ECG plus PPG, and it's about 33 bucks. Maybe get it under 30. We'll see if I can get you a coupon as usual. Check the show notes below the video. A lot of people miss that and ask me, where's where can I get it? Well, you can get it from Banggood, but you can buy it directly using our link, and that helps us out. So check the show notes. Now we're going to get to the good stuff. Before I even show you the specs, this is a, a snapshot right from um, their advertising pages. Imported core tests more accurate, they say. The bracelet not only uses a dual light enhanced PPG sensor, but it also is a compact bracelet equipped with an ECG, okay, which improves the level of monitoring. It's using the 2020 medical certification chip TI-129 in this one. No, I don't know a whole lot about that, but it sure sounds impressive. TI, I think, stands for Texas Instruments, an American chip. In the Chinese watch, ECG chip, professional medical chip, TI-129, and um, PPG, photoelectric chip, from Silicon Labs. So, that's going to be for part of it. Another part of it is about the temperature. And they threw this picture in here. Of course, the, the band is going to be in centigrade, and I'm all over them to try to give us a chance to change it to Fahrenheit, all of us British, American people who use a whole crazy different numbering system. But centigrade is what you get, and centigrade is what we've got. And they're showing a picture that it correlates within like a tenth of a centigrade degree um, with a standard temperature measurement. Yeah, I got some good calibrated um, temperature measurement stuff, and we'll check that out. But you don't see pictures like this doing some actual comparison analysis unless, I hope, they're pretty proud of their product. Then you come to this. They've got actually an all-day temperature monitor with it, they say. Um, questions are automatically monitored 24 hours a day, and temperature data is synchronized to the app. So now we're getting an app that's going to be not just watching your sleep monitoring and your heart rate and maybe your blood pressure or blood oxygen, but body temperature as well. So as you cycle up and down and shift through your body temperature, if you got something... It's going to show it, and even if you don't got something, this could be pretty interesting in showing you if you're dehydrated and your temperature level is rising, or how your cycle is going with exercise. I mean, what a great concept to have an all-day temperature monitor. I will open it, I promise you. I know, you're waiting, but I gotta show you the specs, right? The beautiful thing about YouTube is two things. You can put it in really fast, and I can go like this if you could do that little... Look in the right-hand corner, make it 1.25 or 1.5 or even 2.0. You'll be amazed how fast you can get through these. Secondly, you can all scrabble through it and just zip up to where I open the box, but you're going to miss this good stuff. Like the specs that say it's the E66 using Bluetooth 4. I ah, wish that was higher, but it's all right. Um, it works with uh, iOS and Android-like everything. Uh, it's a single-touch thing, no swiping and moving on this one. It's going to be a, a touch away through the buttons. Got all these languages supported in the app and these in the watch. That's something new. They're splitting it apart and showing you which languages work um, separately in the app itself. IP68, that means it should be dunkable in water. Got the support for the thermometer and the ECG plus PPG heart rate monitor. That's in here. Blood pressure, blood oxygen, step count, multi-modes, all the typical stuff that we see. The G sensors here, that's for your pedometer. Heart rate sensor and, of course, thermometer. And the screens are 128 by 220 TFT Nothing to write home about there. It's a typical band, but it's the goodies inside that make this thing really special. 
about 30 days standby time and about 70, seven days of usage. So you could get by wearing this thing, charging it once a week, and hopefully having 24-7, 24 hours a day, temperature monitoring on it. I sure hope so. So let's dive in. Take a look, shall we? It's got a little lifting tab. Make note of the time so next time you can skip right over here and get past all of my pontification. Well, it's not coming out, so I'm going to have to take the whole plastic thing out here. Uh, it's in there pretty tight. It's just the band and the manual, so not a bunch of wires and other things, which tells me we probably pop off one of the ends on here to get to the charger. It's got a little cover on it, and it's got uh, this plate with a line in the middle of it. Handsome design. Look at that on the sides, on the back of it. We've got two plates, which is usually your ECG stuff, and it looks like a couple of diodes and a, and a sensor in the middle. Really, really, really soft band. Uh, that's going to be great. Uh, breathable, easy. It's not very flexible up at the top. We'll put it on once we turn it on. And let's work our way through this. Okay, here's some Chinese and English ECG test conditions. Okay. A new generation of electrode heart rate testing products, heart rate and HRV reports from the bioelectrical analysis of the human body have certain requirements on the conductivity. Okay, when the human skin is relatively dry, the contact skin needs to be um, hardened. I think they mean moistened um, or wet with water in order to reach the test conditions. So typically, yeah, you need to have some moisture on your arm um, in order for it to work. And then here's the test method. It's giving you the guidance on this. I won't read it. You can freeze frame it and I will be playing with it anyway, but it looks like you're going to be touching two places on the band. And that's on this side. There's a quality check thing on it as well. They really are striving for uh, quality and accuracy, it looks like. And diving into the book, the first chapter section is in English. These are the other supported languages in the manual. Really nicely done, huh? Smart Health is the tethering band that they're recommending with this one. And, uh, yep, the charger is right here. You pull the band off in order to stick it in and charge it, which I'll do in a minute before we dive into it. Colorful pictures, colorful manual. Um... We're just going to page through it. Oh, good. It does weather, sleep monitoring. You can get uh, messages. Got brightness adjustment on it as well. Precautions. And now we're into another language, right? And it's all color-coded. A lot of, lot of detail going on in this band. Well, at this point, I think we need to play with it, don't you? Well, this one looks like it indeed is a winner. Wait till you see all it can do and what it does tethered to the app. You got about three different watch faces you can choose from pushed from the app. You got your uh, basic step count uh, information, calories burned. It's not so much a fitness watch as it is a health watch. Starting with temperature. Of all the ones I've seen on the market, they're all in degrees centigrade. But look, for you Fahrenheit lovers, there is a way in the app to change the display to Fahrenheit to within a tenth of a degree. And we're actually going to use this $500 high-end um, infrared uh, instrument to check the temperature on this one. See how accurate it is. That's called the Check Me Pro, by the way, by WellU. And we have a review on that on this channel as well. So there we go. Got the temperature and it's continuously showing it right now. Tap here. I get into blood pressure. Giving it a few seconds, it'll meander around and it'll show you your, uh, not blood pressure, but heart rate. It'll show your heart rate. There it is, 81, using the green diodes underneath that it's got, the PPG. Tap again, you get into blood pressure. What I noticed on this one, and it's one drawback on the app I hope they fix, is it comes in a little low based on my particular body. So it would be nice if, like some of the other apps, you have a calibration thing. Uh, what I do is I add about 20 and 10, and that pops it up to roughly the range that I'm in. And of course, then it gives us a deviation. So I'd say 126 over 81, 
probably about right for me. So you figure it out for yourself and then you just use this number and add or subtract the delta. The nice thing is if the app has that and does it for you, it just vibrated and locked that one in. Then it's a little more convenient. And then we get into this one and this is the actual ECG. And uh, what you got to do is long press and hold and it'll go into this mode and you see down at the bottom the little white line is going to have a little red thing going across it and it's going to give you another heart rate. This heart rate reading is based not only on the optical diodes which are on but the electrical plates that are down there combined with this one which is the ECG plus PPG. Now I'm going to kind of mess around with my finger here a little bit and um, mess around here because later I'm going to show you the ECG chart of this one and you're going to see exactly where we did this uh, because it is doing a live honest to goodness ECG chart. In addition, uh, I'll, I'll wait till the app and it will, it will excite you with that stuff. Takes about a minute or so. You see now it's giving me my heart rate 77 BPM. I don't think there's a big difference between what you're getting this way and you're getting the optical way, but this is more refined because it combines the two techniques together. So for a more accurate, I would say, or likely more accurate heart rate, using this one is great. Now it says um, th to go to the app to see it because it doesn't display the actual chart here, but it's recorded it. And there's another one recorded in here already. And these can stack up. I'm not sure how many you can put in it, but you can put a few, and which is really nice because you're doing an on-the-cuff ECG chart uh, collection and monitoring your heart rate. So if you're working out heavy, working in the yard like I do, and you just like exhaust yourself, you got this thing on, you can tap it. You can see if your heart is keeping a really good rhythm under that intense um, aerobic out, uh, workout. And, all right, I'll tell you, in the app, it submits it to an artificial intelligence system that can assess multiple factors of your heart rate uh, and your heart wave to tell you if you have any heart conditions you may want to check on with your medical professional. Just vibrated, 98 in my blood oxygen. If I'm not fast enough, of course, it goes back to time. We'll loop through there to where we were. Now we get to sport, press and hold. And like I said, it's really light on sport. You just have a running thing. You have a basic fitness thing. And you have a riding thing. And none of these are GPS. And they're pretty much just going to use the speedometer and your heart rate and a timer to calculate your calories burned. Last night's sleep time here. Um, but that's all the further you can look here on the app. You can see more. Uh, messages, if they're pushed from your phone, yes, you can read them on the watch here. You can't reply to them. And then your overall setup, press and hold here, you can turn on or off the twist your wrist to see the time. You have three levels of brightness. This is the brightest one, um, so you're probably going to want to keep it on that brightest level. And then uh, reset the whole watch, wipe out all the data, and you can shut down uh, the watch as well, or tap once more and go back. And then you're back to your time, which when you press and hold does not let you actually change the watch faces. That has to happen in the app, which means it's time to look at the app, right? Like I've said before, when you see me using my main phone instead of my old LG G3 from the past, uh, it probably means this is a watch I want to use and work with. Check this out. What's new? Last updated June 22nd. Uh, today is the 23rd, uh, just yesterday. Overall, what this app is, is a basic app that does what it does. Uh, it's relatively new, only about 5,000 downloads uh, on it so far. But what it does is pretty cool. I got it all set up. I've used it a, a day now, a little over a day, so you're going to see all of that stuff. You got your overall step count that we saw on here, calories burned and so forth. Uh, 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 you're jumping ahead. Um, tap in here. You see throughout the day in a bar chart how uh, much how many steps you put on during a half hour window so you can track all that throughout the day and see it in a couple of different ways and go back through any days you want to in the past or right there oops that's my display brightness let's get that about right for the screen here it sometimes it gets in the way where i've got it on the side i have to be careful with that 
Display Brightness is an app. I know some of you don't know. It's a third-party app that can be downloaded that puts a little slider that on any screen you can automatically adjust the brightness. Works great on Android smartwatches. Watch any of the reviews of an Android smartwatch. I'm sure you'll learn about it there because I put it in all of them. All right, ECG. This is the fun stuff. Here's a blank ECG page. I can initiate it from here, press that button, and we can see a live chart. And it'll give you your heart rate, your heart rate variability, and your calculated blood pressure. We'll do that after I show you this. When I tap here, it's refreshing from the cloud all of my data from the past. And each of these are the different um, uh, activities that I've done either from the app or as you saw me press and hold from here and they come through with an AI diagnosis to them and again loosely using the word diagnosis I'll say advice uh, medical in uh, interpretive advice for you to get a diagnosis okay very important in at least United States that we do not diagnose and treat with any of these devices. Date and time is on here and you see here's the last couple of them that I put in. If I hit sync, it says in sync and so you load up your in sync songs and listen to it while it's going. And then when it's done sending it to the cloud, going through the artificial intelligence process of assessing the entire heart wave, it'll come back and it'll look like this where you have your records and your diagnostics. And this one was 623 at 1013 and this was 1003. So this is the most recent one. I did one just before we started here, which should just be a plain old regular one. This is the one I want to show you that we are syncing right now. That is the uh, fancy one. There we go. That I messed around with. Now you see the chart is here and then boom, there's where I was wiggling it around with my fingers, right? And here and boom. Now, I want, I want to point one other thing out. It looks upside down for you that understand these charts. That little peak thing there, the P wave, I think it is. Uh, it should be up. Why is it down? Why? Because in the settings, you can set this to be on your left arm or your right arm. I sleep with it on my right arm, so it's currently set for right arm. So the test is going to presume that it's over here, and it's going to make the chart look like that. I could save that to the album. Here's my heart rate and heart rate variability for that test with those squiggles. If you want to see it up close, you just go to the diagnostics. And there it is, the whole waveform with me messing around with it. And there is the diagnostic result because it was reading it all screwy. By the way, I left the defaults in here, set it for female, 18 years old. I didn't mess around with that. Sometimes when you put female in on these apps, if it uh, handles uh, female period tracking, then that will make a difference and it'll show up. It's not so on this particular app, but I left it that way anyway. So it's got a suspected diagnostic here. And if I go into this, oh, it's down further. Okay, so it's telling me a suspected sinus. And check this out. It's got these um, deep definitions of all of these. Do we see a suspected sinus in here? No. But hey, let's say you have a report of a ventricular escape. I can tap here. It's going off to the server, and it's coming back with, a description of what that is, how the wave would be analyzed for it, and more information. And all of these are deeply detailed. Yeah, yeah. Remember, it's called Smart Health. You can download it from the Google Play Store right now. I don't know, without being connected to the watch, if you can get this far into it, you know, if you don't have one of these, in other words, if you just want to play with the uh, the app and look at the definitions of all these things, um, you could try. Try downloading it and see. But for around 30 bucks, this is definitely, definitely one of the best ECG watches I've ever seen. That's all screwy, and I purposely made it that way. Let's pick another one. Let's just go back here. This is a much more smooth one. The spikes are in the correct uh, direction. And if I look at the diagnostics on that one, oh, it's got a little bit of a little bit of movement in it, 
But you see it's saying normal ECG, and these are the details related to that, and then that's the overall chart. And again, the same criteria apply here. So, you with me so far? So let's play with a live chart. I'm going to make sure that watch is going. I'm going to hit play. I'm going to say start, and it's lining up. I touch the button. That should activate it. We get the line going across the screen. Watch these things up here. There it's picking it up. You see there's a little, uh, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, if you don't put your phone in silent mode, it's going to drive you freaking nuts. <laughs> And the button or the sounds, you, you hear that there is space between them. That's the heart rate variability kicking in. The more relaxed you are, actually, the more space there is between all of these peaks. Again, it's upside down because I should have it on my right hand. There we go. We're getting all these readings. I'm going to roll around my finger a little bit. It's delayed about five, six seconds. And there's, uh, there's my movement of my finger. And I'm just going to take it all the way off and see what happens here. With 75%, I'm not touching it at all, and it freezes up. So, yay, yay, yay! Remember the thing I was talking about in here? This stuff? The medical certification chip TI-129? It's working, folks! Great, 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 great. Let's move on to some other goodies now. Back out of here, back out of here. We've got blood pressure, which is doing using the optical diodes, and it's doing it every 10 minutes, and you have the ability to change that frequency. And like I mentioned before, mine are all coming in low, way lower than I would expect, but they're oscillating around that particular point. So... For me, I would need to add 20, maybe even 30, depending uh, to these numbers. Little light hypertensive, Mr. Ticks. Can you tell? Nah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, you get blood pressure. Accuracy, I don't know. Uh, certainly nothing like what we just saw in the ECG with the fancy chips over there. But nonetheless, it's in here. Shows you your lowest and your highest. You can go back other days if you've got that data tracking and so forth. Beyond blood pressure, now we get into heart rate. Same kind of thing. You've got a dot pattern showing your half hour, hourly, uh, half hour probably, uh, reading uh, up to the current time. And... There they are spread out every 10 minutes, it looks like here. And additional ones, if you do them manually, which I went through and I did just before starting this review, make sure everything was working. Okay, every 10 minutes. Otherwise, a manual one will be injected in there too. And we'll, it looks like replace the one that would otherwise normally be there. And there's yesterday when I first started using it, all to midnight and through to today. So you can keep this puppy on and get continuous charts to get yourself a good baseline in blood pressure, heart rate, blood oxygen, and temperature, which we'll get to after you take a look at sleep time. Uh, bad night last night sleep-wise. I went to bed early, then I woke up, and I decided to do some more stuff. The time zone difference between me and China means I'm usually asleep when everybody's awake, so I had some correspondence to do for a few hours, and then I went back to sleep again. And I was wondering, is it just going to catch the first half, the last half, all of it? It caught all of it, and that's my awake time there, but it just shows you when you went to bed, when you woke up, deep sleep, light sleep, all those things are there. Um... And your, your uh, summary is down at the bottom. But interesting that it grabbed that data and it asks you to assess what your sleep quality was. And of course, on all these pages, you can send the actual snapshot of this page out to anywhere you want. Sleep, blood oxygen, same situation. Here's my overall readings every 10 minutes, my chart against uh, current time. And because it's blood oxygen, I would really prefer to see this chart go from like 70 to 100%. Nobody's alive down at 40, 60%. Uh, so, oh, I'm talking too fast for myself. The difference between 98 and 100, you probably can't see in these dots. And it doesn't do anything when you touch on the chart to give you the actual number. Thank goodness you have the real numbers down here. So if you managed to catch sleep apnea, for example, and you were way down at 
85 or something at a particular time, that would be an alarm and you could see a dot there. You're not going to see that on this watch, this band, this app, because for one, it's not using the red diodes, just the green ones to compute blood oxygen. So the accuracy isn't as fine as it is on something like the Spoven Blade band. In fact, the Spoven Blade and this one together make a perfect complement with the uh, ECG AI analysis and the thermometer uh, temperature testing that are missing from the Spoven Blade in that capacity. But with the red diode capability to do sleep apnea analysis, Lorenz scatter diagrams, complementary watches together both of those, one on either arm when you're sleeping and you're medically wired for, for, uh, for bear, really. So blood oxygen, same kind of thing. And now the fun stuff, temperature. Here you go. You can set it for centigrade or Fahrenheit. Um, you get your chart reading right there. And again, the differential should be much closer. Nobody's going to have a 38 or 19 degree temperature. But that's a future improvement. Time every 10 minutes if you want to. Here's where we took some individual readings and here's the cumulative readings throughout the night. And everything's oscillating pretty well, 96, 97. Uh, but is that accurate? Well, let's run over here and check it out. So this device, I press this button. You see where it says temperature? I press that. And it talks to me about how to do the sensor port, which is up here, and touch it to my forehead. Tap that arrow and it shows you what to do. And you kind of run it around on the forehead. This one's getting the temperature of my skin on my hand. So first thing I'm going to do is press this button. I'll be right back. You'll see me leave the screen. Oh, it's making a sound. And it came back out of range. Okay, I got to do it really quickly. Temperature, press... ninety seven point eight now I want to do the same temperature here right next to the band and I got hair there I don't know if that's going to interfere ninety three three what's the band telling me let's get over to temperature let's do a couple of more readings with this one highly calibrated highly accurate used in uh, hospitals 93.3, I'm showing 96.9, right on my hand arm right there. So I'm going to do it again, test it. I'm going to put it right on my skin, right next to the band. Out of range, let's try it one more time. I know it's taking time to do this, but I know you guys are really want to know the truth. So let's do it. 93.3. Going to do it one more time where there's no hair. Just to confirm. But, you know, it's good we're getting consistent results with this. And 94.4 there. And for this one, well, it went out again. Let's let it come back. Now, one thing to say about that, and I don't know that this is happening. Yeah, 96.9. So this is higher. So you could get... Uh, two degrees, subtract two degrees from that maybe, and it would be more accurate as long as this is consistent. So I would have to have a fever and see if this is always two degrees lower than that. Would this be 100 when this is 102? That kind of thing. Uh, don't know. The thing I wanted to say is there's a difference between skin tem temperature and pres presumed internal temperature. And some of the bands that I have coming in pretty soon for review um, have that difference shown. There's the temperature taken at your skin surface, and then it does some sort of an algorithm to calculate what your internal temperature should be in case you want to see if you've got a fever or not. And they're two different numbers. This is truly reading the skin temperature right now. This one may, I don't know, be giving you that adjusted internal temperature because your skin temperature is going to be cooler because it's always cooler outside than it is uh, your temperature, uh, your internal temperature. Nonetheless, there we go. We've got a continuous temperature um, record coming into this thing. And, 
And you'll see in a moment when I get into all the setup of this, you can set a particular temperature alarm on it. So if you exceed a particular temperature, if you're aerobic, if you're out running, if you're doing things and you start getting dehydrated and your body temperature starts going up, you can set a flag for that. So those are all of the different categories that you've got here. You have activities where you can do um, running, bodybuilding, or riding. Again, it's really limited. Don't buy this as a fitness watch. You'll be disappointed. Get an Amazfit BIP if you want to, or BIP S, or hey, the new, uh, oh gosh, what was it called? T-Rex, right? The T-Rex or the Stratos 3. Those are all incredible fitness bands. They do a little bit of health stuff, but nothing like temperature and ECG charts. You're going to become a watch collector yet, I swear. There's just no way around it. Here's where you can set up friends when you're logged into the app and uh, compare stuff back and forth with them. And here's the overall uh, setup that lets you get into the connected band itself, which is here. And these are the themes which uh, I'm on theme three. I'm going to go back to theme one, and you can see that's the watch face that you get with that one. And uh, the others are similar. This is a sm small time, but you do have some of your uh, step count type data on it. We saw theme three, and then theme four is if you want just a nice analog watch without a lot of data. Um, and that's available there. Notifications, sedentary reminding, alarm clock. There's your heart rate uh, that you can do uh, from not at all up to uh, six, every 60 minutes in 10-minute increments. Um, I set it for 10 minutes. It's going to eat up more time, uh, more battery doing that, but I like monitoring it like that. Temperature monitoring, again, interval time can be changed. Your temperature isn't going to change as radically as your heart rate is, so you could take your uh, temperature every hour if you want to. Uh, but if you're exercising and you really think you might overdo it, you might want to do it every 10 minutes. But again, it's every 10 minutes. It's not going to be continuous, continuous. So when you get your alarm that you can set in one degree increments, uh, you're going to want to uh, recognize that it might not trigger that alarm for a minimum of 10 minutes. It's really meant more for monitoring your health. If you have an infection, if you're going to bed, if your temperature goes up and you want to be notified about that, um, then you have that capability. Any of these you change, you just hit the save. It sends that new signal to the watch and you're good to go. That was temperature. Find your device. Doesn't do much. It just uh, vibrates it. Well, you have to turn it on. and Oh, there it goes. It's vibrating. I think if you turn it on when you're out of range, it's going to vibrate to let you know you left your phone behind. See, I was set for the right hand, so I can switch it to the left hand. And now if I do an ECG, the chart's going to turn out the correct way. Screen intensity is high. That's the brightness. We have the three different levels. And there's low, he says, save it, show it to you. It's really dim on low. So uh, that's a, a failing I would like to see is a, is a better overall bright screen, especially for outdoors. And now it's bright again, um, but you do have that. You can disconnect it. You can reset the watch. You can disconnect. You can do all that kind of stuff. And then as far as you, you can set your target for sleep and sports your unit settings, all of them can be turned back to metric or stay. Again, temperature, uh, height, and in inches, and so forth can be in imperial. So really nice to see that capability. And about us, uh, user help, and a place you can give them overall feedback. Really interesting, up and coming, just updated yesterday. They're taking an active role in this. Only 5,000 copies of the app have been have been used so far oh it's taking my temperature interesting it just vibrated so maybe it hit uh, the the high threshold of and, and is notifying me of that we've done a temperature calibration of sorts test with this instrument showing that there is a difference between um, skin temperature read by a calibrated uh, high-end device using infrared and whatever mechanism this one is using um, so take that into account. 
I don't see a temperature probe per se. There's just the two plates for ECG and the optical sensor. So I'm imagining that there must be some sort of a temperature system built in here that's reading the actual skin temperature, but I don't know. It's getting it somehow. Could be deriving it from the optical for all we know. All right, we got to summarize for you guys. Because we've been here a long time, but a worthwhile time, I think, on this one. So far, the only band that is reporting temperature in Fahrenheit, the only one I've seen that's giving you a continuous temperature reading with alarm that can notify you if you're beyond a certain level. Uh, the only one that's got a sophisticated ECG system that can capture the whole ECG on the device on the fly and multiple copies of that one after another, not just one that then replaces the last one if you don't transfer it to your phone in time. This can accumulate them, transfer them over. This one has a really detailed artificial intelligence tie-in to the ECG heart wave to give you information that you can use uh, to go and get a, a, a professional diagnosis from a medical practitioner and all for about 30 bucks. Check the show notes. I'm going to see if I can get it down to under 30 for you. Um, at any time, I don't know when you're watching this, if it's June, you know, uh, 2020 as the coronavirus we're not sure if it's coming back up in the first wave or it's a second wave bouncing up but we just hit nine million worldwide cases 120,000 deaths in the united states and a little band that can monitor your temperature might be a worthwhile investment this day and age okay Thanks for being with us. Thanks for your likes on these videos. It really helps. And of course, your subscription is more than welcome. We've got lots of goodies coming. I got a whole Christmas bag full of bands like this that have temperature built in. But so far, this is a benchmark I'm going to be comparing them to. So always come back to the E66. This one's really a good one. See you again soon.